What's up all you lovely people? Welcome back to my channel, Danny FYR. Find your reason. I'm Danny B, aka Stan, aka whatever the you wanna call me. Um today's video we're gonna be looking at Mr. Ballin, but this is from his main channel, it's not one of his shorts and uh by the title of it, um female Hannibal Lecter given harshest sentence possible mature audiences only so if you're younger than 16 I'd say um, please do not watch this because I don't think this video is going to be for you so please click off although I would love your views this one is not for you unfortunately um, but for everyone else, it's it looks like it's going to be um, a good video, but it's going to be one of them hard ones, them tough ones, you know. But let's get into it and see how evil this woman must have been. Today's story is about a crime so horrific that a judge handed down a sentence that had never been given before in Australian history. This story is exceptionally graphic. As such, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once or twice every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to spray the like button's face with sunscreen, but instead use bear spray. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications. And please and subscribe to me uploads. too. Before we get into today's story, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor. Honey, are you tired of paying full price for your bear spray? Me too. That's why I started using Honey. Honey, like bear spray, is one of those things don't that it. you don't realize you need until you have it. Then you're like, how did I ever live without this thing? Honey, which is completely free, automatically scours the internet for discount codes and coupons for nearly anything you happen to be shopping for online. It's genius. Use Honey, save money. And just think, with all that honey money you're going to be saving, you can finally upgrade from bear spray to dinosaur spray. So, if you want to be like me and continue to bring Might the give that to honey a light, try then. go ahead and true. add honey for free to your browser by going to joinhoney.com slash ballin. Might okay, give a look at that one, actually. Story. How we then, Mr. Ballin? Let's see what's cracking here. This woman cooking people and whatever and I haven't watched this by the way it's just I'm going off the in title. In 1955 Catherine Knight had the misfortune of being born into a highly dysfunctional and abusive household. Not only was she badly mistreated by her alcoholic parents and cruel older siblings she was also scorned by the people who lived in the town with her simply because they didn't like her family. Catherine lived in a very small town in New South Wales Australia where basically everybody knew each other's business. But despite the abuse, Catherine always tried to focus on the future. She would tell herself that as much as my life is miserable right now, in the future I will have a family of my own and I will take care of them the way I wish my family had taken care of me. But I mean, but I suppose that's how, how you've got to think anyway, you know what I mean? If anyone's down on the look, that's the way you've got to think, man. If you didn't, what? Well, You'd have no hope left, would you? And I'm looking at the microphone now. I don't even know where to look. There's the camera. Right, let's get back to the video. But when Catherine became a young woman and began dating men, all of her relationships would always crash and burn because inevitably she and her partner would become toxic and abusive and it would end the relationship. It was like Catherine both didn't know how to be a quality partner and didn't know how to identify a quality partner. Likely because she didn't know what that looked like. She had been raised in this horrible household. But in 1995, when Catherine was 40 and really starting to feel desperate for someone to actually love and to love her back, she would meet a man named John Price who was also 40, and he just seemed fundamentally different on, than every job. other man she had ever dated. He was empathetic to her troubled past, and he love seemed to really care for her, and really wanted to kind of take her under his wing and love her. 
And so immediately Catherine just fell head over heels in love with John, and in return it seemed very much like John had fallen head over heels in love with Catherine. And, and that's nice and that's good, but you know there's a but coming between this relationship, so I mean, for this story it's all nice and good that she found someone, but the story doesn't end well, does it, obviously? That year, Catherine moved in to John's house where he lived with his three young daughters, who right away took a liking to her. And so, for the first time, Catherine felt like her life was really going the way she wanted it to go. But, unfortunately, this would not last. Despite the seemingly perfect start to Catherine and John's relationship, it eventually began to sour when Catherine began to ask John if they were ever going to get married. Catherine really wanted to get married. She wanted to kind of officially have a family of her Maybe own that she, she started take care of. Pushing him but away. John was weary of marriage because he had just left a failed marriage, mm. and he told Catherine that realistically he might never want to get married again. And so over time, this issue really drove the two apart. But I mean, like that, at least the guy was honest with her. You know what I mean? It's. You can't force someone into marriage, especially he just got out of a marriage, a failed marriage, and some people just don't want to get married. I mean, I'm 40 year old, I've never been married. I mean, I've got, I've got kids, and um, I'm not with uh, their, their, mom, their mother, you know, but we get along. We raise our kids together. That's how it goes. And it all came to a head in early February of 2000 when John and Catherine were at his house. They were in the kitchen and they got into a heated fight over marriage. And then before. Make this the last ad you ever see with Adblock 360. Just heads up. Before long, they were both getting physical with each other, and during this altercation, Catherine kind of scrambled and grabbed a knife on the counter and actually slashed John across the chest. And as soon as she did this, the fight came to an end. John screamed at her to leave the apartment and never come back, but Catherine was already storming out of the apartment. They both understood that a line had been crossed, and almost mm. certainly their relationship was now over. Yeah. But over the following days and weeks, Catherine, who had moved into a different apartment at this time, kind of near where John was living she felt very lonely and even though she knew her relationship with John was not a healthy one she longed to patch things up with him she didn't like being alone she wanted to have that family and so she decided she would do what she had previously done in other relationships to kind of patch up the relationship after a fight and so the way she would do this is she would kind of make sure they had the house to themselves and then she would show up in lingerie and they would have kind of an intimate makeup moment I mean, yeah, that that generally does happen. I mean, my my relationship wasn't like proper toxic or anything like that. But yeah, man, I mean, booty call you get booty calls, man. It happens, you know what I mean. So, but I don't know what the result of this booty calls are going to be though. Is booty in a freezer? Who knows? and then everything would go back to normal. So on February 29th, Catherine waited until she knew John had left for work, and she went over to his place, and she had a key to it still, and she went inside, and his three daughters were there, and so Catherine said hello, and she chatted with the kids for a minute, and then she made arrangements for the three kids to go get picked up by a babysitter and spend the night outside of the house. And so then when the babysitter came by the house and picked up the three girls, Catherine said goodbye to them, and then Catherine left John's place, and she went out to get her lingerie. Later in the evening, when John came back to his house, he went inside and he found his kids weren't there, but there was a note from Catherine that explained where his kids were and how she wanted to make up with him and she would be back in a little while. Now, John was not happy about this. Mm. He was angry that she had decided to just come into his house without asking him. That felt very violating. And then also she made a decision about his kids without yeah. talking to him. That just felt so offensive and wrong. Yeah, 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 most definitely if they were split up and he wasn't in the house and then all of a sudden, uh, I mean, the his kids and she sends them off somewhere. Nah, man, that's, yeah, they're now down for that, like, I mean, if I was in his situation, I'd be, yeah, uh, I wouldn't be too happy neither. 
of her to do. And so John grabs a beer out of the fridge, he sits down in the living room, and he begins to wait for Catherine to show up. The next morning at 6 a.m., John was supposed to be at work already, but oh. he wasn't. And so his company, who knew he was very reliable, were concerned something was wrong. And so they sent a worker to his property to see what was going on. And so the worker, he pulls up in front of John's house. You know, John's car is in the driveway. Oh, and the worker's first thought is, oh, I guess John must have overslept. And so the worker walks up onto John's front porch and he knocks on John's front door but there's no answer. And so the worker knocks again, still no answer. And so this guy turns around to leave and go back and tell the company, look, I don't know what's going on. But as he's turning around, he notices on the very bottom of the outside of the door, kind of near the edge, the front edge of the store, there looked to be some blood on the outside of the door. It was pretty easy to tell it was blood. And so the worker was immediately very concerned and he knocked again on the door, but no answer. And so he ran around to the side of the building and he began banging on the windows of John house to hopefully rouse whoever was in there to come out and to make sure things were okay but there was silence and so the worker ran back to his car he drove back to his office and after he told his boss what he had found they decided they had to call the police the police would show up at john's residence at 8 a.m and when they got there john's vehicle was still in the driveway the house was quiet and dark and so the police they walked up to the front door they knocked on the door there's no answer it's silence and so they walk around to the back of the property to and then the back probable door. cause and as they're the walking blood. into the backyard they see in the middle of the grass right behind a window that led into the house, there was this plate of food that had been clearly thrown out of the house and landed uh -huh. face down on the grass. And so the police see that, they're thinking that's pretty weird. And so what they do first, before even going Domestics. to the back door, is they turn to the window, which clearly the food had been thrown out of, but whoever had done it had then shut the window. And so they go over to the glass and press their faces up against it and peer inside. And there's no John, there's no people, there's nothing inside, it's dark. But right inside of this window is this big dining room table and it's covered with this amazing spread of food. It looks like a Thanksgiving Day it's meal had been prepared but then no one had eaten from it. And so they're thinking, okay, well for whatever reason one of these plates no of food way, was thrown out not the John. window. That's very odd. And so the police come off the window, they walk over to the back door That full face on that table was John in it. I haven't seen this, down, I swear. Sorry, I'll, I'll rewind that back but it's just the way they said there uh, I don't know, you know, I think that lovely looking feast on that big dining table is John. And I promise I've never watched this, so I could be wrong actually, but I think that's what's going to happen the glass and press their faces up against it and peer inside and there's no john there's no people there's nothing inside it's dark but right inside of this window is this big dining room table and it's covered with this amazing spread of food it looks like a thanksgiving day meal had been prepared but then no one had eaten from it and so they're thinking okay well for whatever reason one of these plates of food was thrown out the window that's very odd and so the police come off the window they walk over to the back door they knock a few more times but after even more silence they kick the back door down and they go inside. As soon as they step in, there's two officers, they walk straight into the house with the dining room table with all that food on their left and there's nothing that stands out. They're calling for John, it's silent, everything is off, everything is quiet and they keep on walking into what appears to be the living room where the TV is and where there's a couch and as soon as they walk in they see there's blood everywhere. And towards the front of the living room where the front door actually opened into the house there was a very obvious pool of blood. Basically if you stepped into the house you'd be stepping in into this puddle of blood and as they're looking at this pool of blood they see there is a distinct blood trail from the pool back into the living room that they have just walked into and the trail kind of leads behind a couch out of their view and so they walk around the couch to see what's at the end of this trail and they find Catherine Knight's crumpled body on the ground and so right away they rush over to her and they feel for a pulse and they discover that she actually does have a pulse but very obviously she's clinging to life barely and so one of the officers stays with Catherine while they're calling in paramedics to come in and deal with her while the other officer I thought it was there that was like the female Hannibal Lecter what that was pretty a little twist here I don't know what's going on now so let's go draws their weapon and they begin searching the rest of the house. And so the officer walks past the front door on their left and they go into the other side of the first floor, which is basically like this lounge room, kind of like a secondary living room. And as they're looking out across this room, they see there's no one in it, 
but there appears to be this curtain blocking the entrance to some other side room. And this officer, as they're looking at it, they look down and they notice there's another blood trail that starts from the front of the house. It snakes all the way across this lounge room and kind of disappears so into this covered it. up room. And so this officer yells out for John, but there's no answer. And so he ends up going all the way across, checking as he's going, looking around, but there's no one there. And he gets to this towel and with his non-shooting hand, he kind of pushes it out of the way and he looks inside of the space. And it turns out to just be a small closet. There was nothing of note inside. It didn't really make sense that the blood trail had led to this closet. But then as the officer is kind of wondering why the blood trail ended here, he started to feel something cold on his non-shooting arm. And so he looked down at his arm and he saw there was this huge streak of blood on his arm. And he knew he had not been wounded in some way. This was not his blood. So how did he get blood all over him? And then he stepped back in horror because he realized the curtain that he had just moved with the arm that had blood on it was not a curtain. No the night way. before, John sat in his living room waiting for Catherine to return, very angrily waiting for her to come back. But by 11 p.m., she hadn't. And John, he works super early in the morning. He's very tired. He decides to just go to bed. And so he climbs into bed, he falls asleep, and then about an hour or so later, Catherine would walk into the bedroom. She had her black lingerie on that she had bought earlier in the day, and even though John was furious with her and very upset with what she had done that day, Booty seeing call. her like this suddenly made him think, you know what, all my issues with her can wait, and before long they were getting intimate together in the bed, and then they fell asleep in each other's arms. Later in the night, Catherine would wake up, John's still fast asleep, so she's looking right at him, and she suddenly has this intense sense of disgust. She was convinced Whoa. that he was taking advantage of her. That the reason he didn't want to marry her was he was just kind of using her. And this anger inside of her boiled up and she decided right then and there that I need to teach this man a lesson he will never forget. And so Catherine very quietly Ooh. slipped out of the bed. John's still sleeping. She snuck out of the bedroom. She made her way out of the house and she got into her car and she drove across town to the apartment she had been staying in for the past couple of weeks and she grabbed her work tools. I wonder, I mean, but she got what she wanted. It was her plan, you know what I mean? To go back and see him in a lingerie and all that. So she got what she wanted, but then in the morning, all of a sudden, she just wanted to murder him. I mean, man, she must have been somewhat whacked out in the head in the first place. That's just weird, man. Everything about this story is weird. Catherine, where she worked full time, was a meat processing factory. And she worked on the kill floor with the animals that are being turned into meat. And so her skill set was butchering and her tools were butcher's knives. Oh, and so yeah. she grabs her kit of butcher's knives and she yeah, drives back to John's place. She goes into the house, she makes her way into the kitchen and she unrolls this kit full of different sized butcher knives and she picks the one she wants. Just gonna fill it, John. She pulls it out, she makes sure it's nice and sharp, and then she made her way into John's bedroom. When she got into his bedroom, John was still asleep. He was lying on his back, covers up over him, fast asleep. And she climbed onto the bed, being very oh careful not way. to wake him. And then when she was straddling him, kind of on her knees, right oh over way. his midsection, she raised the knife up imagine, between her two hands. Imagine that. Fucking horrific, man. Before there's anything you can do about it coming out of sleep, it's probably already in your chest or your neck. Horrific. And she brought it down into his chest. John immediately shot up, bucking Catherine off of him. She went flying onto the floor. And then instinctively, John just begins running out of his bedroom. He has no idea what's happening. Mm -hmm. He's been stabbed, but he probably can't even feel it. It's all adrenaline. He's just running through the house. But by the time he gets to the front of the house, the blood loss had caused him to be so weak he could barely stand. And so he managed to open the front door, but then he collapsed onto the ground halfway between the inside and outside of the house. And so laying there, he reached out with his bloody hand and he grabbed the edge of the door that was partially open and tried to pull himself out of the house and that's how that bloody print was left on the outside of the door that the worker saw and as he's trying to pull himself out of the house Catherine who had gotten up after being knocked off the bed she Rocking ran to the back. front of the house and she grabbed his legs Holy and John. she pulled him back into the house and then shut the door and then once he was inside she got on top of him and stabbed him an additional 36 times all over his body Rest and then she left peace. him 
Thanks to John. To death. And so while he's dying, she goes into the kitchen and she puts on a large pot of water to boil. And then she began setting the plates all around the dining oh room table God, for a Mom. big family meal. After she was done setting the table, she went back over to John, who was now deceased at this point, and she dragged him all the way across that lounge room on the other side of the house that the officer walked through and then found that curtain. She dragged him all the way across that room to right in front of that closet. And then using her expert skills from working in the meat factory, she proceeded to skin John from his neck all the way down to his toe. And she was so good at it that she was able to skin him in one piece. And oh. she took this skin suit and she draped it over the entrance oh to this my closet. God. And then she removed John's head from the now skinned torso and she placed it in the water that she had put on to boil earlier. She was going to use his head to turn it into some sort of broth or gravy. And then she grabbed his skinned torso and dragged it into the kitchen and began butchering it and then making different dishes with his meat, different pies and casseroles and then after she had made this enormous feast out of john's body she set the food all around i the told table you that's what it was out, though didn't i then she made little placards but it was pretty cards, obvious the names of each of john's children on them and she placed them in front of each of the plates did i hear that right she put placards with each of the names of john's children on in front of plates on that table butchering it and then making different dishes with his meat, different pies and casseroles. And then after she had made this enormous feast out of John's body, she set the food all around the table that she had already laid out. And then she made little placards, little name cards that had the names of each of John's children on them. And she placed them in front of each of the plates because her intention was to feed them their father. And then Catherine sat down at a plate. Right, because this is for mature audiences. That is just a sick cunt. Sick, sick cunt. Ugh. I mean, it's one thing to kill him in the first place. That's one thing. Butcher him up. Cook him up. But then want to serve him to his own children. Sick cunt. Now, I want to know what sentence she got here now except it made her sick and so she opened the window behind her and she threw her plate of food out into the backyard and then when she turned back around and looked at what she had done she decided that instead of facing the consequences she would just take her own life right. and so she went into the bathroom she so grabbed that's... some sleeping pills and then she cut across the front of the house walking through that pool of blood near the door she made her way into the oh. living room she overdosed on sleeping pills right. and collapsed on the so floor she However, wasn't when the paramedics finally up. showed up the following morning they were able to save her and so yeah. once she stabilized in the hospital she was promptly arrested for john's murder she would ultimately be found guilty however she would never take any responsibility and then during her sentencing phase she was given life in prison but the judge made a special clause just for her he told them that her file needed to be stamped literally stamped never to be released Basically, there was no Obvious. hope ever of her getting out of prison. And so after Fucking she was taken away, job, she would become the first woman in Australian history to be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. She is still alive today. So that's going to do it, still guys. If you got something out of Jeez. today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to spray the like button's face with sunscreen, yeah. but instead use bear spray. Also, if you'd enjoy Mr. Ball and all notifications uh, so you don't miss any of our weekly one or two video go. uploads. We now have a podcast that puts out weekly. Minute. Right, yeah. Let me sort this out here. If you'd uh, like Mr. Ball and Go, go over support his channel but um about that video uh that was pretty shocking that ending like i mean like i said but to even want to feed him to his own children i mean you don't just come up that with that in like in one night sleep with him and then all of a sudden in the morning or oh, this just nah man she must have been planning this for a little while She's got to have been like sexy lingerie and all that, and she wanted to make up with him. Nah, that that was just the way to, the way to get get back into the house to murder him. So, fellas, what you you going with? You never know. <laughs> just be careful there. Eh?
and all you ladies out there be careful some weirdos about these days you know but uh in the comments let me know what you think about about that video and about that horrible cunt and i'm saying cunt and i'm swearing today because this is for mature audiences only so yeah give me some comments about this one and um i'll get back i'll i'll get back to you so anyway for this video i'm out i'm danny b aka stan aka whatever the fuck you wanna call me until next time all you lovely people you know how we go peace